Okay, so hi Mark, hi Richard. You Hello. both hi. Uh, directed and screen wrote Shaun the Sheep, yep, uh, which is an animated movie about a sheep uh, that wants to have like a break and yes. uh, in his very busy life and he goes to the big city. So Shaun the Sheep used to be a TV show. Uh, what made you want to make a movie out of it? Uh, I think we always, uh, it always felt like we wanted to make a movie out of it, actually, even in the first series, um, because there's no dialogue. Uh, we we thought um, the 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 episodes start to look quite cinematic, and uh, as time went on and the characters developed, we thought it was time to uh, to make tell longer stories with Sean. And so, uh, as you said, there are no <coughs> dialogues in the movie, so everything is conveyed like through the eyes and the mm. eyebrows, and also the music. Uh, is it hard to screenwrite something like that? Yes, <laughs> uh, but also quite liberating in a funny sort of way as well. Um, it made us think hard about the way we told the story. We had to be more visual. Mm -hmm. um, and there is sound in the movie, so there's like um, non-verbal communication, which yeah. is in some ways you know, a better way of communicating than words. Um, and we had great animators to help us f you know, get the performance from the characters. Um, we had um, you know, a great composer, Ilan Eshkari, to help us with the music. So we had lots of people helping uh, but it was still a challenge, I and mean, we weren't entirely sure it was going to work when we started out. Um, but, you know, we watched lots of old movies and thought, well, they made it work, maybe we can. Okay, and so as you said, so this is an animated movie, this is clay animation with stop motion. Yes. These are very hard techniques. Could you explain to our readers in a few words how these work? Yeah. Well, the, um, the, the technique of stop frame is, 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 is that everything is, is real. It's like, sl it's like live action in slow motion, really. So we've got, uh, we've got the sets, we've got the puppets, we've got the, and our um, animators are like the actors. They act through the puppet. And uh, the puppet has to be moved um, at least well, about 24 times to get one second of film. So uh, erasing an arm like that might be half a second. So that's 12 separate movements okay. and uh, each each it's like lots taking lots of photographs and then through a computer they it looks like it's moving yeah okay so how long does it take to make such a long <laughs> movie with so many movements well yeah it takes a long time each animator can do um on a good day two seconds okay well. so it's um so we maybe get with all the animators we'd get maybe two minutes a week Okay. Um, so the whole process took, uh, for us, the shooting process took 10 months, which is actually very quick for um, yeah. stop frame animation. Um, the whole film took three years because a lot of the hard work goes into the story. And yeah, with the writing the, and everything. Exactly, yeah. So uh, what made you want to do animated movie instead of like real movies with actors and scenery and everything? This, this is a real movie. Yeah, of course it is. You accept your premise. Why, why, why did you why want animated? to do that instead of yeah. something else? Um, I, I, I like animation because it in, includes surrealism and uh, in the real world you can't get sheep to walk on their hind legs <laughs> and, uh, and drink cups of tea. Not so not, not, not <laughs> I get into trouble with... Uh, no, that's <laughs> true, true enough. So it, it's, uh, yeah, it has to be animation really because, um, because the story demands it really. I'm a screenwriter and I've worked on live action real movies. Mm -hmm. um, but there is something wonderful about being in the world of animation in terms of your imagination, where you can take it. Um, and it's so collaborative. It's a community of people working on a feature because um, it's such a long, slow process. You know, um, you need a lot of help. Um, so there's lots of good things about it. Um, but I think in the end, when you make an animated movie, you know, not these days, it's not just for children. It's for adults as well and families. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice experience for people to come and see an animated movie. Yeah, exactly. When I went to see the movie, there were as many children and adults in yes. the room. It was very fun because children and adults were not laughing for the same reason at all. Uh, is it hard to create those like two dimensions while screenwriting? Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes they laugh, and the same, I think they laugh at the same thing. I think, you know, adults actually quite like sometimes physical slapstick jokes. Yeah. Um, as well as children, but there were there were different kinds of jokes. Yes. Yeah, I, we we don't consciously separate the two. We don't go. This is a joke for children. This yeah, joke for adults. Sure. We just try and make what makes us laugh. Sometimes the occasional joke has got a more adult slant, and if it doesn't interfere with the story, then we'll st we'll still include it. 
Um, so yeah, we, we just try to make it for everybody, really. Yeah, because there were many cultural references, like there were, were I saw one from mm -hmm. Breaking Bad, and like the yes, the, was the well poli spotted, yeah. yeah, and the police tape like from CSI and yes. everything that, and yeah, I think that the adults saw that more than the children. But maybe the children still enjoy it. They don't necessarily enjoy it in the same way, but they understand. You know, they they laugh at those moments. There's a there's a you know there's a Abbey Road yeah reference so maybe children wouldn't understand it's an abbey road reference but it's still funny to watch for disguised sheep walking across a pedestrian crossing yeah sure it is um the animation movies in general have evolved a lot like with uh, computer animation and 3d and everything how do you think clay animation can evolve with that uh, with time well i don't i don't know um the techniques of have just been refined over the years because stop frames have been made for a hundred years and mm. uh, natural techniques of making a puppet and how you shoot it have evolved but uh, the idea of a physical model being moved in a real set I think is, is, is going to stay there because um, particularly children love to see how things are made, how they're put together um, and it's like a giant um, toy box mm -hmm. coming, to, coming to this place. So you both work for Iron Man Studios. Uh, how do you think the Iron Man Studios brought novelty in the animation world? I suppose um, there's an Arban look that you instantly recognise. Um, and maybe there's an Arban tone as well. There's an Arban sense of humour. Um, stop frame animation helps because uh, there's a lot of CGI films around now and stop frame animation. Arban isn't the only studio that does it because Leica in Portland does it. And, Tim Burton does it and various European animators as well but there is a maybe a particular Britishness to the Aardman uh, style and maybe that helps it stand out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah and as we told there are many references in the movie yeah. um, what are your references in screenwriting and especially in comedy screenwriting? Well, we, we watched a lot of silent movies <coughs> initially we watched uh, Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, you know all the all the comedy greats from the silent era and um, and we learnt from them Buster Keaton particularly because he, he's deadpan like Sean is before we started writing we watched a lot of uh, other movies um, we watched Jack Tatty because uh, it, there's no dialogue in Jack Tatty but there is sounds like there is in ours and um, and we also liked um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off which was uh, Matthew Broderick the lead character has a similar personality to Sean. We thought um, that was an interesting film to watch. So yeah, we, we did our homework. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you have any advice for our readers who would like to work in animated movies? Um, well, I think the first bit of advice we always give is that if you want to make films, start making films. Because in this day and age, <coughs> all you need is a camera or a computer or a whatever. Um, and a lot of the people that work at Aardman um, have had the same experience that when they were young they were already doing things just for themselves they were doing animation or mm. writing scripts or you know d uh, shooting films in their garden or something so you know that's the first thing is, is, is get on and do it um, and you know it's no harm in going to college and getting trained but that's not the important thing the important <coughs> thing is to, is to have a passion for it yeah and, uh, and there are lots of obviously there are lots of different aspects because we've got not only have we got animators and um, directors, we've also got writers, we've got painters, sculptors, model makers. There are lots of different disciplines involved in making the film. Um, so, you know, I started off um, making sets and then uh, gradually did more of the animation as well before I start directing. Yeah, it's all kind of visual art skills that are, that, that are in, in animation, not just, not just the animating.